Welcome back to my video. I will discuss about the functions of financial intermediaries, which is the second part of the topic and overview of the financial market. In this part, we will discuss about what is the financial intermediaries and what are the functions of financial intermediaries. A function or a financial intermediary is a company or persons that act as a middleman for various parties in order to make financial transactions easier. Examples of the financial intermediaries is like commercial banks, investment bank, stockbroker, pool investment funds, and stock exchanges. Through a range of loans, equity, and hybrid stakeholding structures, financial intermediaries reallocate otherwise uninvested resources to productive firms. As I have explained in the first parts of this topic, related to the indirect finance in the flow charts that has been shown, Financial intermediaries are middlemen who will carry out the task of borrowing fund from lender saver and lending it to another party called borrower spender. This is for the purpose of meeting their needs for personal use or financing the projects to be carried out. For example, bank acquire fund by issuing liability to the public, which is the asset to the public, in the forms of saving deposits. Bank might use the funds to acquire an asset by making loans to company A or buying a company A bond in financial market. It shows that funds have been transferred from the public to the borrower with the help of financial intermediaries. There are three functions of financial intermediaries that will help the financial market system run more smoothly. The first is related to the transaction cost. Transaction cost is the times and management in carrying out financial transactions for people who have access fund to lands. For example, A land to B. In the process of lending a fund from A to B, there is the cost that they have to pay, which is they involve a payment to the lawyer. That's what we call the transaction cost. But through the financial intermediaries, there is, sub there is a substantial we can reduce reduction costs because they have developed expertise in buying them and the large size which is allow them to make to take advantages of economics of scale which is the reductions in transaction costs per dollar of transactions as the size of transaction increase for example bank know the lawyer and use that contact over against so the legal cost per transactions will be lower the advantages of using the transaction cost under the financial intermediaries so the financial intermediaries also can provide the investment opportunities and liquidity services which is service that can make customer conduct transaction easily for example checking account pay bill, pay bill etc the second function is called resharing besides providing the lower transaction cost Financial intermediaries also can help reduce the exposure of investor to risk. Risk means uncertainty about the return investor will earn on assets. Risk sharing, where the financial intermediaries create and sell assets with risk characteristics that people are comfortable with. And financial intermediaries use the funds they acquire by selling this asset to purchase other assets that may have far more risk. The third one is asymmetric information, which is, we call it the difference information. One party often does not know enough about the other party to make accurate decisions. For example, borrower know better than the lender. There are two conditions occur from the asymmetric information called adverse selections and moral hazards. Moral, moral hazard or adverse selections. The first one is adverse selection is the problem created by asymmetric information before transaction occur. Adverse selection occur when the potential borrowers who are the most likely to produce an undesirable, which is adverse income, or we call it the bad credit risk, are the one who most actively seek out for a loan and are thus most likely to be selected. But the moral hazard is a problem created by asymmetric information after a transaction occurs. It's a risk or hazard that the borrower might engage in activity that are undesirable or immoral from the lender's point of view because they make it less likely that the loan will be paid back. 
because moral hazard lower the probability repeats of loan, so lenders decide would rather not make or give a loan. You can get more complete information about all these functions in the flipbook that has been provided. Now let's take a look at the deepest intermediaries in the financial systems. There are three types of intermediaries. The first is depository institutions. Below it, there are also three types of institutions that explain depository institutions. The first depository institution called commercial bank, which is it will issuing checkable deposits with deposits on which check can be returned. The second one, saving deposit. Deposit that are payable on demand but do not allow the owner to write checks. The third one is time deposit. Deposit with fixed terms of maturity. Commercial banks will use this fund to make a commercial loans, which is consumer or mortgage loans to buy security or municipal bonds. The second one is saving and loan associations and mutual saving bank. Obtain funds through saving deposits and checkable deposit. And the third one is credit union. A small corporation lending institutions organized around a particular group, which is the union members, employees of the firms, etc. Acquired fund, funds from deposit called shares and primar primarily makes consumer loans. The second depository institution called contractual saving institutions. Acquired funds at periodic intervals on contractual basis. The consumer don't worry about the losing funds because can predict how much they will have to pay out in benefits in the coming years. So liquidity asset is not important and tend to invest funds in long-term security as bonds, stock and mortgages. There are three types of companies lies under contractual saving institutions. The first one is life insurance companies, fire and casualty insurance companies and pension funds and government retirement funds. The third types of financial intermediaries called investment intermediaries. The first one is finance companies, which is provide fund and sell commercial paper, issuing stocks and bond. Financial companies lend funds to consumers who make purchases of such items as furniture, automobile, etc. The second one is mutual funds, which is sell shares to many individuals and use the process of Purchase diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds. There is a pool resources which is low transaction cost when buy large stocks and bonds. It can sell share at any time, but value will determine by mutual funds holding. This mutual funds is quite risky. The third one is money market mutual funds have characteristics of a mutual funds, but also function to same extent as a depository institutions because offer deposit types of accounts. Like mutual funds, they sell share to acquired funds that are then used to buy money market instruments, both are safe and liquid. Shareholder can write checks against the value of their shareholdings. It functions like checking account deposits that pay interest. Another type of investment intermediary is called hedge fund. Hedge funds invest in many types of assets with some specializing in stock, other in bonds, other in foreign currencies, and still other in far more exotic assets. And the last one is investment bank. It's not a bank or the financial intermediaries. It does not take it deposits and then lend them out. Now let me move to the next subtopic related to internationalizations of financial market. The growing of internalizations, or we call it globalizations of financial market, has become an important trend nowadays. What is meant by the globalizations of financial market? Uh, the tendency for markets to become global rather than national. As barriers to international trade, for example, tariff, or reduce international transports and communications, improve, and the tendency for large multinational companies to grow to service global market. International bond market lies under internalizations of financial market. This international bond market traditionally instruments in the international bond market known as foreign bond. It will sold in foreign country, denominated in the country's currency, and being an important instrument in the international capital market. There are two types of international bond market, euro bonds and 
euro card. You can also get more complete information in the fleet book that has been provided. The second one is world stock market, which is the foreign stock market have been growing importance in developing the country. Increased interest in the foreign stocks has prompted the developments in the U.S. of mutual funds that specialize in trading in foreign stock market. Internationalization of financial market is having profound effects on the U.S. Internationalization also of the financial market leading the way to a more integrated world economy in which flow of goods and technology between countries are more common. The last parts of this topic related to regulations of financial market. Financial market regulation is a set of rules, laws, and principles that govern the operations of capital market as well as the organizations and persons who do business with it. The goals of regulations and supervision is to make economic processes more efficient and fair, but a practical regulatory framework must deal with or and will impact the products and institutions that carry out those functions. The main reason for regulations in financial markets, the first one is increased information to investors, ensuring the soundness of financial intermediaries prevent financial panics and improving monetary control. There are seven types of regulations in the financial market. The first one is restrictions on entry, disclosure, restrictions on assets and activities, limits on competitions, deposit insurance, restrictions on interest rates, and the last one is improved monetary control. You also can get more complete information about all these regulation types in the fleet books that has been provided. I really hope that this explanation can provide a knowledge and information to all of you related to the financial market. A more complete information can be obtained in the fleet books that has been provided. Thank you very much.